Mr. Amster, and today we're going to talk about animism, polytheism, and monotheism. Before we begin, please make sure that you have made a copy of this Google Doc and saved it to your proper ancient Civ folder. All of the answers and work you're going to be doing will be answered here. All right, let's take a look at our objectives and targets for today. Students will explain how ancient civilizations practiced religions based on their surroundings. Content target. I can identify key characteristics about different ancient civilizations. Some students are going to extend that and be able to explain those key characteristics. Language target. I can read, and in this case, a little bit too, listen and note-take about different ancient religions in order to compare how different civilizations around the world worshipped. And we're going to build towards a project where you will work with a partner or partners. Let's get started. Right here, it asks you to define religion. And a bonus if you can do it in your own words. William James wrote that religion consists of the belief that there is an unseen order and that our supreme good lies in harmoniously adjusting ourselves thereto. And this was quoted by Robert White in The Evolution of God. Google defines religion as the belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal god or gods with words like faith, belief, and divinity as similar words that are used. At this time, pause the video and make sure that you have identified what religion is using this sentence starter. All right, moving on. One of our primary resources we're going to use this year is the United Religions Initiative. They define religion with some other aspects. So they define religion or a spiritual tradition, which is quite similar, as a way of explaining the mysteries of life, a way of explaining a supreme power or absolute power, whether impersonal or personal, nameable or not. Other ones they use include, but are not limited to, a way of explaining how to lead a good life on earth and in an afterlife. And these codes and behaviors are written down in sacred documents or passed down through oral tradition. Students looking to take a little bit more of a step should look to try to add one of these definitions to their current definition written here. If you need some extra time, please make sure that you pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to move down to religious classification. Types of religion. So we're going to be looking at these five groups. Now, if you notice on your worksheet, the what and who is define, de, divine will be what you're writing in. First up is animism. This is, so what is divine here? Non-human beings, like animals, plants, and the natural world itself. Examples include traditional folk religions and indigenous nature worship, like Shinto, which is a Japanese culture. Take a moment right now, and I want you to either highlight Oops. Traditional folk religions or indigenous nature worship based off of which one you would like to learn more about. You only need to highlight one of them. Moving on. Polytheism. Look at the word poly 
means many, multiple gods, many gods. A belief system of the ancient Greeks, Romans, and Hindus, among others. What I'd like you to do here, after you've written in your definition of what, or your example of what is divine, or who is divine, is to highlight which one, the Greeks, the Romans, or the Hindus, you think you are the most interested in learning more about. Highlight only one. Moving on to monotheism. This is mono, meaning singular, single, single God. This is Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. Here, I want you to highlight the one you know the least about. Which one do you know the least about and highlight it? Is it Islam, Judaism, or is it Christianity? Atheism, this is where there is no God, no supernatural deities. And we see this in atheism, of course, hence its name. And in some forms of Buddhism, where the Buddha is not thought to be a god. And our last one is pantheism. Here, who or what is divine is thought of as nature, the universe. There is no supernatural deity here. The universe as a whole is God, and there is no God but the combined substance, forces, and laws in the existing universe. Feel free to go back and re-listen to any one of these pieces, or to pause the video and finish note-taking. Otherwise, this section should be filled in at this point, and we're going to scroll down to here. Animism. Animism is the belief that the natural world as a whole or in parts has a soul or a spirit. As a whole, it's the world spirit, Mother Earth, Gaia. In parts, this is rocks, trees, springs, and animals all have individual spirits. It is the oldest form of religious belief emerging in hunter-gatherer groups all around the world. And since everything has a soul, human beings are not seen as superior to anything in the universe. So everyone is working together. Take a moment and add in one of these three major points or reword them into your Google Doc. So you either are doing this part this second one, or this third one. On your worksheet, you see that you have the basics of animism here. This is a one-minute video. It's like 50 seconds. Feel free to pause my video and watch this one. If you're looking for a little bit more detail on animism, the origins of animism will also be a good video to watch. Looks like this, and I highly recommend it as well. Please, of course, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Polytheism, many or multiple gods. Polytheism explains things that, are not, that, that don't seem to have an explanation. There is a hierarchy, so a social class, like an order who has more gods, you know, who ha who's more, the more powerful God, who's less powerful? And explain why some forces are more powerful and widespread than others. If you look at gods all over the world, or polytheistic gods, in some parts of the world, the god that is the most powerful is a different part of the world. Some have sun gods, some have earth gods, some 
It's a lightning god, each a war god. Some ha each group has a different powerful god that controls everything with some other gods underneath. Individuals and cultures don't necessarily worship all the gods they believe in. They often focus on one or a small amount. See in Greece where like uh, the Athenians focus their, their beliefs around Athena, Sparta, around Ares. Many polytheistic gods are imperfect and human-like. They they're not the moral example to follow. In fact, sometimes they're the moral example to not follow. Polytheistic religions often adopt gods from other religions they come in contact with. Polytheism does not fall with Rome, actually. Hinduism, Buddhism, and even pieces of Christianity show tendencies towards polytheism in modern beliefs and rituals. Make sure you're adding at least one of these bullet points into your Google Doc. Oops, right there. More beliefs and examples. So ancient polytheistic beliefs, gods are in control of natural events such as rainfall, harvests, and fertility. In general, polytheistic cultures believed in sacrifices to appease the go their gods. For example, the Romans and the Greeks had a highly structured pantheon, which means like a highly structured order of who is the most powerful god and goddess, and it's stretched out over many different parts of the world. Monotheism, one god. Monotheism is the belief in one god. Monotheism is the newest form of religious thought, appearing in the last few millennia. Modern monotheism is more focused on moral perfection of the one deity, so they're looking at their deity, their god, as the most powerful person and also a, a symbol of what every person must try to obtain. They're also considered to be the creator of the universe. Because there is a belief in one god, Monotheism is inherently less tolerant than polytheism. There can only be one god in monotheism, hence the title. At this point, you have added some pieces of information about animism, polytheism, and monotheism. It's time for a little bonus, which means it's optional, on how do monotheism and polytheism compare. And the key thing is there is no clear distinction sometimes. Christianity is monotheistic but believes in a holy trinity, three gods in one. Hinduism believes in thousands of gods but believes they come in a single source or are different manifestations of one divine power. Moving on to our reflection. So, you're going to listen to, on your own, this video. You're going to understand how the new Neolithic Revolution impacted religious belief, and, specifically with the video, how do myths help us cooperate in a larger number? All right, so let's look at the reading first of all. Please take the time now to read this. I'm just going to let you pause the video, read forth when you're done. You can reflect on how the Neolithic Revolution led to a religious revolution. All you need to have is one simple answer here to explain your position.
And here is the video, which is also available for you on your Google Doc. It's obviously not here, it's just this is the video. And it's going to help you to sort of see why humans run the world and how we use the myths to help us cooperate with large numbers. If you have any questions, please make sure that you reach out to me or your teacher, if another teacher is using this, with any questions. Have a good day.